as far as crop adjustments go, there's a few things that I'm looking for when I, when I make some decisions on dropping fruit. First of all, uh, is the fruit coming from a primary shoot or a secondary shoot? So hopefully you can see in this particular case right here, there's a primary shoot right here containing two really nice clusters of fruit, one out here, one here. And then there's a secondary shoot that came out of that same node um, and it put on a short secondary shoot and it's got a smaller cluster of fruit that was um, just a few days behind when it was blooming uh, compared to these guys. So this would be a good candidate for removal if we wanted to do that. And this is something that we probably would have done uh, even much earlier in the season than at this point. We're sitting in about the lag phase right now. We're somewhere before Verasion. But um, the fruit has been held for quite a while in this particular case. So this is something that we would generally want to remove probably earlier in the season, somewhere in mid-June, late June already, possibly in July, uh, just to get the benefit of devoting energies toward the rest of the clusters that remain. So, but in still, in this case, we can still probably drop this. Um, I'm going to show you what that would entail. Basically, we're just going to take our pruning shears or something and drop that fruit and and get rid of it if we thought that this shoot was no was if there was too many shoots we could have removed the whole shoot in fact but in this case there's not too many shoots in this in this area so i am going to leave it because maybe i can get a spur position out of it next year here again is another case of hopefully you can see that here where there's a primary shoot get this guy tucked behind there primary shoot has two really nice clusters and then the secondary shoot right next to it has a tiny little cluster that's always going to be well behind in development so this is the perfect candidate to remove again are these um, these clusters of fruit off of the secondary type shoots you can tell that these secondary shoots they haven't made much progress there's only one two three four five six maybe seven small leaves on that guy so it's not really accumulating enough sugar in those leaves to ripen such a big cluster of fruit so it's perfect to drop that kind of thing we let the bigger work uh, of ripening fruit be left to the to the larger shoots the shoots that have reached a certain length of three to four feet in length um, in some cases you're going to see shoots that have of course the two nice clusters of fruit um, but they may once in a while kick out a third uh, cluster of fruit somewhere down you know a couple of nodes after these these two uh, these two nice primary fruits here so a fruit that's way down here is also a nice candidate to remove and you can see if you can see the difference here I'll try to twist this shoot around a little bit these are on the same shoot right now and look at the difference in uh, development this guy is uh, really nice and fully formed and this one is still you know two or three weeks behind in development so this guy in my right hand that's the perfect candidate to drop um, it's the most distal cluster and therefore dropping it like that is no problem uh, the age of the vine makes a big impact on how much fruit we should be dropping so of course on young vines vines that are under three years of age we're taking a lot of the fruit off maybe we can hold a little bit of fruit in that year two and maybe a little bit more in year three but it all depends on the, the development of those, of those vines at that stage. We don't want to be compromising the structure, the architecture of the vine for producing fruit. So that's why we're generally dropping most of the fruit on the early age of the vine. As the vines grow in their, into their own, as they get roots that are more developed and, and uh, architecture that's more developed, we can carry more fruit. But just be aware that that uh, that fruit and shoot and root balance is something that's very important to understand for you, for your particular site. Um, everybody's going to have a different uh, capacity to produce different amounts of fruit, and you just have to understand your site according to well weather conditions, your soil type, um, how far north or south you might be. That's going to impact how much fruit you should be able to carry. So all these different things come into play, and um, just. Uh, just uh, I guess the main thing is don't get too greedy with too much fruit early on you can always you can really hurt your vines early um, in their lives if you get a little too greedy and try to produ produce too much fruit too early on um, it's always best to kind of let those vines grow slowly into their own and then bump up the yields from year to year 
and then finally plateau out at some point who knows when that might be maybe year seven to ten you find a nice middle ground of how much fruit you should be handling on your vines and again like I said that's gonna be different for everybody so somebody can get three tons to the acre and the next guy can get five tons to the acre and get the same kind of chemistry out of their fruit but um, that all depends on their site and their weather conditions and all those things that I said earlier.